Hey, let's talk about this, uh, this AEW show. I thought it was an excellent show overall, with the exception of the, uh, the women's match. Did you guys see that women's match? Marina Shafir? Holy I smokes. It. I got a lot to say about that one. But it opened up with CM Punk and Penta, which I thought was an excellent opening match. Uh, Punk decided he wanted to be a luchador because he was facing Penta. So he's trying all sorts of uh, springboard flip into the arm drag, the whole nine yards. Then he goes up top and he's going to do like a springboard into a Frankensteiner. And he, he literally misses by a mile. He like springboards, but instead of going up, he goes down. And then he fell down and crashed and uh, sold his knee. And uh, they kind of sort of turned it into a spot there for a second. Then they get back on track, and he, he ended up hitting that top rope Frankensteiner. But at the end of the day, uh, hit the uh, GTS off a springboard by Penta, and he got the pin. So uh, Punk racking up wins here, and he'll likely be getting the championship uh, title match at the end of May. Uh, versus the winner of Hangman Page and uh, and Adam Cole, which is coming up on Friday, Rampage, in a Texas death match at 4 p.m. here in San Francisco. 4 p.m. on the West Coast. Not ideal. No. We had uh, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus versus Red Dragon for the AW Tag Team titles. Most people figured this was going to be a title change, and in fact, it was not. And they had a very, very good match. And uh, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus hit the Thoracic Express and got the pin. And to me, the key to this was afterwards, O'Reilly goes after them, and FTR comes out to make the save, and they made a point that FTR was the double crown champions. And of course, when you hear double crown, what's the first thing that comes into your, into your mind? Why, it's the triple crown. And so I immediately thought, you know what? Maybe it's actually going to be FTR, who are the next AEW World Tag Team Champions, and they will be the Triple Crown Champions, holding all three sets of these belts. So I think that you could actually do... Uh, I would prefer a singles match, but with, with uh, O'Reilly and everybody uh, doing the attack afterwards, this might end up being a three-way with all three titles on the line, which would be a fantastic match. I guess we'll see where they end up going, but that's what I thought uh, coming off of that. We had Sean Dean and MJF, which I loved with every ounce of my being. So Sean Dean has beaten MJF by disqualification early this year. So, of course, you know, you watch all this WWE and you figure, okay, MJF's going to go in there, he's going to get his win back. So MJF gets in the ring and he's, he's just killing poor Captain Sean Dean. And then all of a sudden they cut backstage and... Wardlow has arrived. There's bodies everywhere. And uh, Wardlow shows up and he starts beating up all these dudes. And they're sending out like 500 security guys, just one guy after another. And Wardlow's killing all of them. And MGF's freaking out and he's running around outside like a chicken with his head cut off. And uh, and finally he's on the ramp and all of a sudden he looks up and uh, he sees Bryce Remsburg. And remember, it's like, seven, eight. Nine and MGF's like way at the top of the ramp. And MGF goes, Oh, let's say Bryce. He goes, Listen, I don't know what Tony Khan's paying you, but whatever he's paying you, I'll give you triple if you just don't say ten. And Bryce looks around at the crowd and they're all cheering and he goes, Ten! And the place goes crazy and MGF's furious. He's lost again to Captain Sean Dean, this time by count. He's so angry. This was awesome. Now, I hate to say it because, uh, you know, he's an idiot, dislikable person. But uh, MGF was totally in the right. Like, what was this guy counting for? There was a riot outside of the ring, and there's like 5,000 security guys between MGF and the ring, and you're counting? So I hate to say it, but... Uh, well, if we're going to be serious about that, then... I am going to be serious. Well, if a you're serious go- man. If you're going to do that, then how? what sense would it make for MJF to get on the mic and tell, try to bribe an official? He could either be suspended, fired, something like that. And who cares? The decision could be overturned anyway, and he would have just had another loss off the off TV. So Look at these geeks. That, if you're going to go that direction with that... Then, this guy goes, Bryce is a stickler for the rules. Bro, there was a riot that broke out outside the ring. The rules should be that this was a no contest. What are you counting the guy out for? Hey, look, anyway, rules, all right? 
Uh, the Jericho Appreciation Society versus Eddie Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz. And they had a very good match. There were a lot of very good matches on this show. And uh, 2.0, which had been beaten up earlier uh, in the parking lot, they show up. And, of course, they get beat up like geeks. And then it ends up with uh, Kingston finally getting his hands on Garcia after all this time. But then behind the referee's back, Jericho hits Kingston in the back with Floyd the bat. And and uh, Kingston's pinned. So this feud must continue. I didn't like, notice. Did Ange get his shoes back? No. He did a run in barefoot. That's, they're going to be hanging over a wire outside of somebody's house over there. <laughs> and then, my God in heaven of almighty, Marina Shafir in sky blue. I didn't hate this. So, Am I a bad person? Listen, well, it wasn't like it was, you know, here's what happened, everybody. Okay. They had about 3,000 tickets sold in a 4,000-seat building. So they maybe got, you know, I don't know, three, 400 people walk up. There's probably about 3,400 people in this building. Okay. So for most of the show, you would think that there was 10,000 people in this building. This crowd was so hot for stuff on this show until Marina Shafir came out to face Sky Blue. And I think that they figured, well, you know, everyone likes Sky Blue, so we'll get some, you know, babyface sympathy or whatever. Well, they were wrong. You would think that there were, and I'm not even making this up, zero people in this building. You would think that there was less people in this building than there were during the pandemic when there was nothing but wrestlers around the ring. They were deadly silent for this match. And uh, Marina beat her up and looked mean, and nobody cared. And uh, I'm going to need more time after the break to further dissect this segment. But holy smokes. The quarter, I'm going to have to see the quarter for this. Watch it be sky high, but I don't think yeah, it's going to be. be. <laughs> the highest rated thing. Oh, my God, can you imagine? We had uh, Team Taz versus uh, Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland. Ricky Starks here in his hometown. He's just beloved. And so they didn't have him go out there like Miz and bury the town to get booed. He was just beloved. And they had a good match. And uh, Powerhouse Hobbs, after interference from Taz, hit Keith Lee. Not Swerve Strickland. He hit Keith Lee with a gigantic spine buster. And he pinned him in the middle of the ring. A huge win for Powerhouse Hobbs. Big win for Starks in his hometown. I like this a lot. Every part great. of that match worked perfectly, I thought. The result, the fact he didn't beat Swerve, it's a big win for uh, for Powerhouse Hobbs. Lee has looked good. I mean, everything about that, I thought, worked perfectly. Then we have, uh, here are the lineups. A Rampage Friday live. We have a Texas death match, Hangman Page, Adam Cole. We have the Blackpool Combat Club versus the Gun Club in a six-man. We got the uh, Ruby Soho, Robin Renegade, Owen Hart Foundation tournament qualifier. I wouldn't be surprised if Ruby Soho won this whole tournament, by the way. I just want to throw that out there. Battle of the Belts, we have Scorpio Sky and Sammy Guevara for the TNT title. Jonathan Gresham and Dalton Castle. For the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship. And Thunder Rose will be facing Nyla Rose. I'm going to need more time after the break to talk about that segment, by the way. And then uh, Dynamite next week, we have got Wardlow versus The Butcher. Dr. Britt Baker returns in Britsburg against Daniel Camella. Jungle Boy versus Kyle O'Reilly Owen Hart Foundation Tournament Qualifier. Darby Allen versus Andrade in a coffin match. Tony Khan will make a huge announcement and uh, I told you guys a few weeks ago that when he had that Ring of Honor announcement, uh, that was not 100% confirmed uh, before uh, you know he made his announcement that he had an announcement. So he said he had an announcement before they were sure that that was actually going to be the announcement. So there has been a backup announcement for a while now, and uh, we're going to find out what that is coming up on uh, Wednesday. Brian, I regret to inform you, by the way, Ruby Soho apparently has been buried underground and she's being used worse now than she ever was in WWE. Wrong. Some say. Some so say. then we had the television championship, Samoa Joe and Minoru Suzuki. I believe the official count was 104 chops back and forth My in God. the first couple of minutes of this match. They're practically bleeding 
In fact, I think they were bleeding. They Their were bleeding. chests are all <laughs> bruised up, and it's just it's absolutely brutal. And uh, then they got back into the normal wrestling, and uh, just a great match. I mean, I loved every every moment of this violence. And then uh, finally, Joe goes for the muscle buster. Suzuki tries an arm bar up in the corner. Joe powers out, hits the muscle buster, wins the title. Samoa Joe, the new... The one thing that was funny about it was they go, his long journey is finally complete. And I was like, it's been a week. <laughs> but they were talking about the history of Joe and Ring of Honor, but he's now won the... The Ring of Honor television title. And then, yes, Satnam Singh debuted and beat him up. And uh, him and Lethal and Dutt are a trio. About time we got them trios titles. I was reading this book about bats. The book explains that a bat cannot stand and then take off. Okay? A bat can only fly, fall from a great height and then fly. Gotcha. Sting is now a bat. He just goes up on something really high and he falls. He, he did not jump through these tables. <laughs> no, he, he fell. Just, he fell. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.